weird. I don't want to look at myself that big. So <clears throat> try to make this informal. Um, I'm recording this so that I can save it and possibly some people can pay it back, play it back later. Um, but uh, in light of everything that's been going on in the country with kids, um, I feel like I've had this desire lately to start up teaching again. So. For those of you that do know me, last year um, I tried to I tried what you see is behind me, the iTutor Math Show, which I I started on YouTube, and I started this on YouTube um, initially because I wanted to host a show that would give parents ammunition, ideas, uh, some thoughts some creative ways and approach to helping their children at home. Hence the reason for the tagline was building an environmental learning at home. I believe that the greatest struggle that we had in America with mathematical teaching wasn't per se the teaching or the school system. Um, I believe that the biggest issue that we had was that we were missing some components, which was the, the component of the home environment that the schools have a responsibility to provide curriculum to push our children to a level of learning but there's only so much a school can do if, and if you remember when we were children in school i mean if you had a bad loudmouth kid like myself in the classroom then that one disruptive student basically hinders all the ability for the rest of the class to learn and be pushed to that next level and then of course you have the separation of classes and that whole other argument that I'm not going to get into, but I, I felt over the years, all the years that I've been teaching, that the the element that was missing was the home environment. But I also know that it's very difficult for parents uh, to teach and facilitate mathematics at home if they didn't have a strong mathematical background to begin with. And that's just a fact. I mean, that's not to shun anyone or to shame anyone or make anyone feel bad. The reality is if you are not if a parent or a person, let's just forget, if a person doesn't feel confident in something that they deliver, then they're not going to feel confident in trying to help their children. And then when you add elements like, you know, AP, pre-AP, non-AP, on-level, uh, all these different category, uh, categories that they put students in, and then you add the element of like things like the common core, like the way it's taught at school, then you really run into a problem. And all the years that I've been teaching mathematics, I've always run into the same issue. And the issue is a parent comes to me and says, hey, my child is struggling. And just like today, I thought I'd test the waters again to find out, you know, is there really parents that are really wanting to to help their children? Is this really going to be an issue, this children having to work from home, children have to facilitate mathematics at home? Is it really going to be a problem, right? And so I thought I'd test the waters and I threw it out there and I got some responses. There's some people that gave me some some comments and already some people asking me, hey, how much? For those of you that ask me how much, I'll just tell you what I've told parents that all the years that I've been teaching. It's not about the the money or the cost because I can easily say, here's my cost. And unfortunately, a lot of parents, you'll hear that and then you'll make your decision based on the cost. Not to sound like a salesman, but it's not about the cost. The end result should be, how do I get my child to a place that they no longer need to rely on? on one-on-one -on -one tutoring and all the students that I've worked with all the years my goal was always to work myself out of being a tutor so the long story short is when I did the iTutor math show last year I didn't um, I didn't actually do any teaching I just did ideas and giving parents knowledge that I felt that they needed to be able to teach at home because I hoped that I would reach a place that I would no longer teach mathematics. I've been doing it so long that I don't really want to do it again, and that's not fair. 
And the reason why it's not fair is I've always been a firm believer that if you have something, if you have a gift or ability, I believe in all my heart that if you have a gift or an ability that benefits other people, then you owe it to humanity to share that in any capacity you can to to help and save people who are struggling mathematically or whatever that thing is, right? So whatever it is, I'm a firm believer that you should give that gift away. And I stand behind Proverbs 327. That's been the basis of my entire teaching all the years that I've been teaching and coaching and facilitating mathematics has been Proverbs 327. And it says, do not withhold good from others when it's in the power of your hand to give it to them. And I've worked with adults. I've worked with adults that don't speak any English. I've worked with adults from other countries. I've worked with people trying to get out of high school, people trying to get into high school, kids trying to get into middle school, kids trying to pass the standardized test, the tax test, the STAR test, the GED, people trying to get in the military. It's all the same. The problem is always the same for me. What I see in all the years that I've been teaching is the issue is always fundamentally the same problem. And the problem is We don't have a really firm, strong foundation in fundamental mathematics. And because we don't have a strong foundation in fundamental mathematics, we can't get to that level of thought, that creative thought, that analytical thinking that says, here's a standardized test, or here's a particular test to get into the police academy or the fire academy or get into the military or whatever that, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. To me, it's all the same. All the years I've been teaching, it's all the same. Now, I know there are people that argue and say, well, uh, what about, I had one gentleman one time tell me, well, what about uh, differential equations? And I just looked at him like a differential equation. What the heck does it matter? That doesn't matter. My focus of the teaching that I've been doing all the years is helping students, contrary to grade, get through the school system so that they can get to a place that they know how to think for themselves, approach mathematical problems differently so that they can rely on themselves to be knowledgeable, to research, to find the answers. That's it. That's the whole magic. And unfortunately, what I've witnessed all the years in and out of the school system is teaching creative thought or teaching thought, that's a lacking skill. If there's any skill that I think that we're lacking in the American education system, It's the fact that we don't teach thought. We teach children how to do what they're told. We teach children how to do whatever we tell them. It's time to go potty, raise your hand. If you have a question, raise your hand. It's time to go eat. It's time to sit down. It's time to be quiet. And I get it. There needs to be some order to some learning. I get that. But as a coach, I also understand that there has to be a creative element that doesn't bind children and and shackle them and compartmentalize all of them and put them in a box and say, you have to be this way to be a good student because that's not reality. Because the reality is when a child leaves school and goes to an institution of higher learning, they find, a lot of them find, I could have been a better student if I wasn't restricted or if somebody allowed different means for me to learn, such as some students are auditory. They don't need to look at you because all the Bobby Ozuna teaching, talking, moving, making jokes, talking with my hands distracts them from learning. So they listen. And when they listen, they look like they're not paying attention because they're not looking at you. And there's all these things. So here's what I've come down to. Ever since COVID hit, ever since my son and all of our children no longer were going to school, the very first thing I thought to be transparent was, oh man, There's going to be a lot of students failing. There's going to be a lot of students that are going to fall behind. We're already behind as a nation. I've said this all the time. Uh, There are statistics out there, and you find whichever one you want. There are statistics that say that we are two and three years behind the dominant top five countries in the world mathematically. Okay? I also know that if you go to school from kindergarten through 12th grade, and we're off three summers you know, three months every school year in that break between school years, and you do that times 12, that's 36 months, there's our three years that we're behind. Because in America, we go to school for 180 days, spread out roughly eight or nine months, and then we take the summer break, and what do most kids in America do? The same thing my kids did. They don't want to talk about school. They darn sure don't want to talk about mathematics, so that's my own children included. They don't want to talk about math, so and we don't know how to push them to it because there's other things we want to do, family vacations, we want to go on trips, so then we're already behind. 
So we start the school year, and it happens every year. Bobby, my child just started. They just got their they just got their first report card, and they're already behind. Or they just got their three week assessment, and already behind. I'm like, man, school just started. How can you be so far behind? The reality is we are behind, period. We collectively as a community of people, of parents, of educators, uh, as leaders, our children are behind. And now you take into the fact that they left school around spring break. They didn't go back to school. They had some online assignments. And let's be honest, those online assignments, some for some schools, it was a, a, a ton of assignments they had to turn in. And then for some schools, a few assignments, check, check, done, you got your passing grade, and you're out of here. That's okay, because COVID's going to be over, right? Well, here we are. We're going into August. There are some schools, like my child's school, that's going to be pushed out to September 28th before we, they even go back to school. So what's that going to do to your child? And I know how to facilitate mathematics. I know how to help my son. I know how to help my children if they had questions on history or science or or language arts, or writing an essay, uh, or mathematics. I know how to help my kids, right? I know how to help my children. But, again, what I keep saying is, I don't believe it's fair that when you have a gift to be able to help other people, I just can't sit back and hear all the parents struggling. I watched the news report today, and that was kind of like, that was like the sign for me. It was like, okay, here we go. I saw a news report today, and it talked about parents paying $80, $100 an hour to hire private tutors. Now, that's great for tutors. I did it for years, and it provided a means for me to be able to feed my family. It also provided a means for me, me to be able to serve my community. It also provided me a better means of being able to be enriched as a person to see the lives that have been changed because of a test or because of a, of a grade. And I think that's where I'm at now. I no longer care about the money it's not about the money. So this little word right here, tutor, and with tutoring comes a cost. I'm just telling you right now, my initial vision for going back online and for teaching mathematics online is not to take your money. There are people saying, why don't you use Patreon? Why don't you do a subscription? I could do that. Uh, there are people saying, try YouTube again like you did. Maybe you'll get uh, a million followers <laughs> for math. And then you'll make a few dollars. I can do that. I can just tell you right now that my initial goal right now, and I've even put out on Facebook tonight that I found a gentleman who's willing to sell three nice white boards so I can decorate this area so that I can actually start teaching math. Last year when I did the iTutor Math Show, the goal was to uh, offer parents in fuel so they can go do it themselves. I don't think that that had the effect that it should have, unfortunately. In my opinion, a parent should go learn what they need to learn to help their children. And I say that because I, I worked as a coach and I taught youth baseball and girls softball years ago. And I had, I, I like telling the story, I had mothers, and I don't mean this in a sexist way, but I had single mothers who came out and said, hey, I don't know anything about baseball, but I'm here to support my, my, my son and and what do I do? And I was like, well, you can take him to the cage once a week and watch some games with him and blah, blah, blah. Those same mothers at the end of every season were like spitting out knowledge. Like they knew, they understood the game. They understood the rules. They understood what, what was happening and how the game should be played. And when you think about that little simple story, they, they started out not understanding any of the fundamentals of the game. And by the end of the season, they're cheering and coaching from the stands. Is it because their child went to practice and then somehow – like through osmosis, it just funneled over to the parent and suddenly they knew the game? Or was it the parent saying, this is important, I need to go learn it? And I'm a big advocate for that, and I push people for that. So I don't play into the rule when parents say, well, I'm not, I wasn't good at math. Well, that's great. I'm sorry that you were not good at math. The beautiful thing about being an adult and having these fancy things like phones and tablets is, you got the knowledge at our fingertips that we didn't have growing up in the 80s we didn't have that. So I think I am going to go back to doing the show, but I think I'm going to do the iTutor math show and I'm actually going to start teaching mathematics. I have about 24 elements that I think, uh, we'll just say 20. I have about 20 elements that all the years that I've been teaching, I believe are the fundamental killers of the American education system and why we're failing mathematically. Again, I don't blame the teachers. They're not, they're not the parent of the child. I don't blame the parent. You're not the teacher of the child. I think as a community, we have to work together. I know how to teach mathematics. I've been doing it for years. 
I know how to break things down and explain it to people. I try to use different means and methods and stories and jokes and analogies, and sometimes I don't even talk because I think you have to do whatever you need to do to be able to inspire that child or inspire the thought that makes people say, I get it. And then you have to practice it over and over again, and that's just the key. That's really the magic. Figure something out. Struggle with it. Struggle well enough to figure it out. And when you get to that place of enlightenment where you realize, hey, I think I know what I'm doing, do it again. And you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. I used to tell my students all the time, you know how you know, how you know when you were getting older? When you didn't have to stare at your finger while you're picking your nose. Kids stare at their finger while they're picking their nose because they don't know what they're doing. As we got older, because you picked your nose a thousand times, you no longer have to look. And it's the same for many things in our life. You cannot take the attitude and the approach that my child had a worksheet. We struggled with it. We turned it in and we're done. Because that's the problem. When you're done with that thing, whatever that element was in math, whether it was fractions or decimals or percents, as an example, that's not done. I'm telling you right now, your child needs to know that till they get to college mathematics. And if they have that foundation because they've done it 10,000 times between 4th grade and 12th grade, then your child understands mathematics and they have a knowledge and that's the goal. So I had as an example somebody reach out to me tonight and I asked what grade their child was in. They said 4th grade. I can tell you right now, there is no 4th grade mathematics on the planet that should be putting a child or a parent in fear of 4th grade. They shouldn't. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. That's it. Now, I know you'll say, well, Bobby, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I'll, as I start doing the show again, I'll explain to you how that's that's not really the case. It's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing is the essence of mathematics and doing them over and over again and understanding the language of mathematics and the approach. I can tell you right now that uh, standardized tests, because... Um, I know standardized tests very well, and that's all I can tell you. I know them very well. Uh, they're all kind of the same. They're the same. I don't care what acronyms they slap in front of them. Uh, they're all about the same, and the approach to them is the same. And when you understand that because you face it enough, you can master that. So um, I'm open for ideas. The The short of this video is I'm open for ideas. I'm looking for people to collaborate with. I don't want to act like I know it all. I don't want to act like I'm the savior of the world because I'm not. I would like to post teaching videos online that are free. Um, I would like to post those videos on YouTube, and as long as you have a YouTube account, that's free. And that means you can watch them over and over again. I'm accessible through YouTube, through comments. I'm accessible through Facebook, through messages. Um, people can ask me questions, and I can focus on particular topics. The way I see it is, uh, as an example, school's not going to start for another eight or nine weeks as it is. And that's just in Texas. I don't know what the rest of the world is. But in Texas alone, school's not slated to begin in my backyard until September 28th. That's that's eight weeks. I'm going to tell you right now, your child can master fractions in eight weeks. Your child should be teaching you fractions in eight weeks. Your child should be teaching you percent in eight weeks. But it takes a commitment. So I'm open for ideas. I'd love to partner up with anyone who has a passion and a calling for it. Again, last year I stopped teaching. After all the years that I've been teaching in the private sector, I, I stopped because I felt like I did my job. I did my part, and I can put on my life resume that I served the world, and I helped many, many hundreds of families and students be successful and get over those humps. But this COVID thing is really bothering me because I feel like I have a bigger part to play. I feel like I still owe it to the world to share my gift for helping families and just the little test that I did today of posting out on Facebook and saying, is there any families that need help? And getting responses and shares that fast tells me that I have an obligation. So if you have ideas, if you have a need, um, I'm open to them. Message me. Please reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, uh, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your ideas. If you're somebody that says, hey, I, I've taught mathematics a little bit on the side. How can I help? Uh, this isn't me. Uh, thank you, Nadia. This isn't me pretending that I uh, it's all about Bobby because it's not. Again, my son that's living with me does not need daddy's math help. He does not need it. Thank the Lord he doesn't need it um, because the hardest thing is teaching your own child. But there are families that will. And with schools being delayed, children have to work at home. 
parents who don't understand the mathematics, parents that are scared of things like common core, and teachers who mark off five points because you didn't do it this way and you didn't do it that way. Sorry, TEA. If you find my old videos from years ago, you'll know what I think about you, so find someone else to go watch online. I'm here to help teach people and children and families how to build that environment of learning at home, as a community at home, so that your child can be successful. You do it for sports. You do it for dance. You'll go above and beyond for extracurricular activities, but we don't do the same thing in the American culture for academics. And I know that's tough, but that's the reality. That's the cold heart truth of the years that I've been teaching. So I want to be someone for you. I'm going to start doing the iTutor Math Show again. I'm probably going to post that on YouTube. It's probably going to be 100% free. For those of you that are asking me for tutoring, I'll just say, watch the videos and tell me where you're struggling, and I'll teach on that. Tell me if you're still not getting it, and I'll teach another way until we get it. Because if our children can master, let's see, September, October, November, December. Let's just take that. All of September, all of October, all of November, all of December. Let's just pretend that's four months, that's 12 weeks. If your child can master six elements in 12 weeks, six elements that they didn't know last year or they forgot over the summer, I'm telling you from experience, you just gave your child a huge advantage moving forward in mathematics. And again, you cannot believe that when they turn in an assignment, the turning in of the assignment was the accomplishment. The turning in of the assignment is nothing more than the validation that says, I learned it, try me, give me some kind of silly grade that says I'm smart or not. That's not validating knowledge. Validating knowledge is from you, the parent, saying, I now know what my child is learning, whatever that element is, and they all have the same name, I don't care what country you go to, it's just said in their own language. A fraction in Germany is a fraction in America. And that's a fact. A probability in Africa is probability in America. I don't care what they call it or how they spin it or how they teach it or how they mandate they better learn it. There's more than one way to get to my house. There's more than one way to get the right answer in mathematics, and that's a fact. Sorry. Deal with it. My, my goal and my objective teaching is to teach you different ways of thinking so that you can approach the mathematics because if you know how to get the answer, then it doesn't matter how they test you. You already know the answer. It's just a matter of figuring out how are they asking me the questions for the test or how does the teacher want me to write it out so they can slap that 100 and the smiley face on it. So again, uh, thank you, Rosario. Um, I, like I said, I'm open for ideas. I don't have all the answers. I have the equipment thanks to my team at Fort Austin. Uh, everyone knows, if you don't know, I work for Fort Austin Consulting. Uh, with my partners were an IT and a low voltage company, and they've been big advocates. They provided a lot of the equipment that I have when I streamed the iTutor Math Show last year. They provided the equipment, so my lighting, this camera, uh, my monitors, uh, my equipment that I have, they provided that, and they're going to be they're con they're continuing to provide it because they're they're advocates for education. So I don't know, Rosario, if you have ideas, I mean I'm open to anything. Uh, a weekly call. Uh, a text message, uh, you tell me. I know where children struggle. I know where they struggle mathematically. I'll just tell you that, parents. I know where your children are struggling, so you don't even have to tell me. My idea is how do we spread the word? How do we get the information in front of people? Again, there's other places you can go to. I remember that guy from Khan Academy, Khan Academy, whatever his name is, I remember when he started doing videos a year ago when I started, and, you know, they were whatever. There's, lo there's tons of resources. I'm just another resource. I just believe in my heart that because I can teach mathematics, I owe it to the world to continue doing that because now is the time that people need it. I was ready to be done with it, hang it up, and say I did my part. Um, but he, uh, this school thing scares me. Uh, it scares me of how much further children are going to fall back. It scares me that, that parents are really going to be struggling at home. And again, I'll say it again. Proverbs 327. Do not withhold good from others when it's in the power of your hand to give it to them. That was the entire, basing of my, the entire basis of all my years of teaching was that I could do it. I could, I could help, and I helped. And it, it opened so many doors. 
So uh, thank you for watching. Those of you who did watch, I, I hope that when this video is over, you'll share it. Share it. Spread the word. Spread the gospel. I, I just want to help. Um, I probably won't do private tutoring because let's be realistic. It's not fair to you to bring your child in a home for someone that you don't know during this season, right? And may not be safe from my house for people to come in my home. But we have technology. You know, we have cameras. We have videos. And like I said, I'm going to start recording videos again. I'm going to start posting videos for free online on YouTube, um, teaching, you know, fundamental mathematics. And if that doesn't work for you, ask me and we'll go to another level and we can discuss it openly here. You know, parents can ask questions. I just feel like I just need to do my part and that's the best I have to offer right now. If anyone has anything else that's extravagant and beyond that, awesome. Hit me up. I'm not here to make a million bucks. I am not here to become wealthy off the vulnerability of people because they struggle to help their children at home. So if that's your motive, find another person to partner up with. If it's not your motive and you just really care because you know what's going to happen in this country if we keep pushing school out and people keep trying to have to figure out how to learn at home, we're going to be in bad shape five years from now. Hell, we're going to be in bad shape next year. Kids in class 180 days a year and still we have schools that can't get 53% and, and just get over 50% to pass the standardized test in mathematics. What's going to happen when kids spend two or three months at home working with the parent, trying to work with the teacher? We have to partner up together. So that's my news. That's all I had to share. You can message me if you have ideas. I'd appreciate you listening. Um, I've got a post online. I'm trying to see if I can get somebody to help me in the area bring some whiteboards down to my house. And um, I'll get them up on the wall, take this silly thing down behind me, and I'll start t posting some videos, and let's start learning mathematics together. So that, that's my offer to the world. Thank you for watching. Sorry I rambled on for 27 minutes. I really appreciate you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.